Today I got the center supports in for the roof in the middle of the boat. I might put some supports in the back, but I'm not sure. Uh, they don't need it as much as the middle of the boat does. Right now, I'm welding in what I'll call a splash guard. Maybe it's called combing. It's basically just a half inch up from the surface so that if water runs this way, it'll at least have some metal to splash off of instead of a wood sandwich with silicone. So one of the things I've needed to do is push up on the metal here so that it will meet the half inch of metal on top. And previously, I've had a lot of trouble keeping the jack in place. I've even gone so far as to weld it to the floor. But I discovered a trick that I'd like to share. So here, the post is pushing up on this piece, and it goes down to the jack. And then this post is blocking the jack from moving because it presses against here. So now I don't have to weld the jack to the floor in order to get the pressure on here to remain focused. I used a grinder with a cutting wheel to cut up the half inch by eighth inch stock and I'm tack welding it on. This will go up at the top actually. And later on I'll final weld so I've got all these pieces ready to go for tack welding and here's what some of the final welding looks like I'm just stitch welding top bottom top bottom top the strengthening of the roof is done all of that stitch welding there are the longitudinal supports the next part of the plan is to straighten out the roof as much as possible. You can see it's twisted a lot. So I'll use a jack to pull it up and this rubber mallet to make it go down where it needs to. You can see it's still smoking because I just welded these pieces on my wooden handle broke so I had to create my own handle. So all I do is I place this stick in there and it should be that high. You can see when I get over here this is too low. So I just slide the jack over and then I raise it and of course when I put it back down some of it's going to uh, go back down with it, but I get a little bit more <coughs> with each attempt. You can't see it real well from here, but this is the best place to explain it from. The right side of the coach roof actually leans a little bit further out than the left side. And when I built it, that was the mistake I made. I just moved it over a little bit. It's maybe an inch, no, half an inch in the wrong place, further to the right than I want it to be. So I attach these points to the top of the right side and the bottom of the left. I've got a lot of tension on them and I'm going to weld in these spots here. I haven't welded those portions yet and I'm hoping that the heat that I apply to this portion of the roof will, or the wall, will cause it to permanently move in just half an inch. That's all I need. We'll see if I can move that over to there. Here's phase two of the operation. This worked a lot better than working with the other side. And, here's the results. Here's the mark right there. Let me place this about here, because I remember when I measured. That was about right. So, I got a good inch between the mark 
and the new position of the roof line. So that's good. I'm gonna weld now. I'm sanding off the rust from the roof. Super easy to do. It's just a grinder with this sandpaper attachment. Also, I welded on a water stopper. I don't know if you call that combing or not. My theory is that water may wash over the deck and it needs to be stopped by something besides a wood and um, silicone seal. Silicone never seals, right? It always leaks. So I got this here and in the rear. And you can also see I've got a couple of poles here. They're not meant to be very strong sideways, but up and down they'll provide enough support to give it some extra strength. It's ready for paint. Sanded off all the rest and put paint thinner on it to clean it off. I'll use this Rust-Oleum primer. There's the first coat of primer. I rolled it on. Definitely needs one more coat. Now I'm fixing that depression that used to be there. It used to bend inward here so you could actually see it go in and then out and make the curve around, which was wrong, of course. Now it's looking a lot better and I've pulled it by attaching it to this tree. And on the other side, I had to also attach the boat to a tree so that it wouldn't just slide sideways when I pulled on it. Uh, it's pretty easy overall. And that's how wide the cap is. And I'm gonna insert some metal in there. And then I'll have to pull out on this portion as well to make it just right. I'm going to be cutting up ballasts now. Each section is going to be 11 and a half inches long because the sections in my keel will be 12 inches in between. So these will fit in there and I'll probably fill it with concrete or something else to hold all this in place. So I cut up this metal and all this metal here should make some nice ballast. I'll have to weigh it, see how much I've got, but I'm guessing this is maybe 700 pounds to start. This is the end of day 68. It took me a full day to raise the boat one foot off the ground. And I'm starting to weld the undersides. There's five seams that I have to do.